Welcome back to the channel everyone. I am super excited but also kind of stressed out to film this. Um, I have filmed it once before. It took a very long time to do. Um, I was not happy with it. I was not happy with the quality of the video. I wasn't happy with the background. I wasn't happy with my hair. There was a lot going on. So I have decided to refilm this video, but that is okay. I'm excited to do it again. It was a lot of fun. Um, and it is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but that's okay. We're not pushing ourselves. We're not getting better. So I'm super excited to be here today and I am going to talk about some of the latest fall trends that I have incorporated into my autumn slash fall wardrobe. Um, granted, fall in Texas is a little tricky because it's not super fully, although it has been this week. But I am loving so many of the trends out now. Um, I've seen a lot of these videos and I love watching these videos, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll make one. I feel like I'm a little bit out of my league making it, but I am super excited just the same and I hope you guys love it. If you don't, I will never make another one again. It's totally fine. Honestly, I feel like this fall I've gotten into the fall clothing aesthetic more than I really have any other year. Um, I feel like Americans just kind of celebrate fall or autumn a lot more than Australians do. So um, in every way, like from outfits to decor to everything. So I am very excited to show you some of my favorite fall trends. Um, I'm Obviously you have the, the basic fall trends that come and go every year and that's the seasonal outfits, the changes, we got, we're wearing warmer clothes, we're wearing jackets, we're wearing boots. Um, I mean there's a lot of boots worn in, in Texas but we're changing up the boots, we're wearing them a little more. Um, we're layering, that's pretty standard for fall. Things that I'm really sort of loving this fall are the masculine, um, the masculine shapes, the masculine cuts with clean lines, um, pop of color. Again, it's not super revolutionary. We're kind of always doing a pop of color in our fall wardrobe because it is so heavily neutral. Lily knocked the camera. Like I said, the fall wardrobe this year is very focused on. Um, a lot of masculine shapes and I think that is also coming true through the materials that are being used It's heavily heavily vintage inspired 60s a lot of 70s and a lot of 80s So I'm loving that as well It's a really great way to incorporate the new sort of booming vintage culture that I think is transcending seasons Always and it has been for the past few years, um, which is really awesome. I'm loving that I definitely have some really cool vintage pieces that I want to show in today as well as um, just some new pieces. So without further ado, let's get the first piece on. Why did I do this? Oh. This is a piece that I am super excited for. I actually just added it to my wardrobe last week, I think, or maybe the week before, no, the week before. Um, I thrifted this from Vintage Supply in College Station. Um, it is a gorgeous goat leather biker jacket. I've got it folded up, it's a large, but you can always pull it down for that oversized relaxed fit but this jacket is awesome the bomber jacket is really trending at the moment the bomber jacket really lends itself to a lot of those trends that i was talking about earlier it's clean lines it's masculine they're warm they're cozy dress it up dress it down um, and definitely very heavily 80s inspired that sort of like Top Gun era. We, I know that the movie came out in the 80s, the original, and then last year we saw this re-emerging again of this style with the second Top Gun movie coming out. So that definitely influenced um, popular culture a lot. It also lends itself a little bit to the 2000s grunge vibe that we're sort of seeing a lot with the, the chunky biker boots with the buckles. I love it. Like I said, this piece is thrifted. There are a lot of... Um, biker jackets being sold from you know H&M to Zara to Naked very very big and very very popular at the moment I also feel like they're 
forever pieces. You, you're always going to have them. They're always going to be somewhat wearable. I already have a black leather jacket that is probably not super in style this season, but if I wanted to wear it, it would still look great with any outfit. It works really well. It's versatile and I will have it forever. Being 80s inspired also complements the vintage trend that we're seeing at the moment. I think it's something that is going to be around for a really long time as we start to focus more on sustainable conscious shopping, um, which is awesome. That's why I love this piece that it's vintage. It's actually a piece of uniform from US, an old US Customs and Border Protection uniform, which it says on the tag at the back. So I feel like that's super cool. America has awesome vintage shopping, awesome, awesome vintage shopping. You can always find something, whether it's like a, an old graphic tee or a, a leather piece, they have great denim. So all that stuff is super awesome and super wearable this fall. I love this jacket, I'm obsessed. I cannot wait, you can dress it with trackies, you can dress it with jeans. You can dress it up for a nicer outfit. I'm just, it's super easy to wear. It's beautiful quality and quality that you would pay a lot for today with it being genuine leather. So, leather. so I'm loving this piece. Let's get on to the next one. I am loving these jackets. I was umming and ahhing about which one to get for a long time. Um, this one is from Zara. It's got that brown false Sherpa faux sherpa um, and the brown faux leather um, it's this is gorgeous it's super soft i actually saw a girl on tiktok talking about this coat apparently they had it last season i didn't know that but um it sold out right away and when i saw this it was actually sold out but i think it is now back in stock um obviously i have it so I think, but when I had gotten it, it was only the piece, that one piece that had come back in stock. But I think now they have since put it back in stock. Um, the aviator jacket, like I said, with the leather bomber, it's everywhere. Um, pretty much any H&M, Zara, Stradivarius, Naked, all those stores are carrying aviators. They're big, they're in in a really big way this fall. Again, we're inspired from the 80s trend, that vintage look. I saw a lot of them at Vintage Supply when I went to get the jacket the other day, but they were a aviator jacket with denim, so as opposed to the leather. Um, again, super wearable, super easy for that that transition period. A lot of I've seen a lot of people style them with mini skirts. Um, to help with that transition period. You're warm, but you're still, again, similar to the leather bomber, this jacket lends itself to a lot of the trends we're talking about. We have the clean lines on a lot of the collars. I guess this one is kind of hard to see because the brown with my hair and, but um, especially with the lighter colored Sherpa, it's the, that clean line, those mas that masculine look. This one, again, is quite oversized. So it's, it's also super practical. It's gonna be practical for layering. And like I said, super easy to get on the vintage market as well as getting a newer one. So definitely look around. I love those vintage worn pieces. I mean, this even has the worn look in itself. So I guess it really is sort of celebrating vintage and that vintage style. I love that it's kind of cropped. I mean, it's not super cropped, but yeah, it's really, this is just a really gorgeous piece. And I know, again, this is gonna be really easy to wear in the future. I'm loving it. I also love how this looks with the top button done up. I think this neckline is really stunning. I don't know, if, again, I don't know if you can really tell, but that you can see like peaks of the Sherpa through this collar, um, but the shape of this is just really nice, really elegant. Um, I'm loving this piece. So the next trend that I will be talking about is of course knitwear, but in specific, this see-through kind of knitwear. Now, again, your wardrobe should always serve you. It should always be practical. For me, these are super practical. I'm gonna say it again, but it is not cold in Texas right now. So having a piece that makes it feel like fall, like can kind of lean into that sort of fall fun, um, almost layering, I guess you feel like you're layering um, style, but also have something that is practical i'm not going to get hot in um we've seen sheer has been a trend that has uh, transcended the last few seasons i think and i don't think it's going anywhere soon i think it's really elegant definitely that late 90s 2000s inspired um look 
thinking Posh Spice, I think she did it a lot. So, and also, you know, their huge success with their Netflix documentary, that's gonna be here to stay. I feel like um, going into winter, it may not be as practical, but I really am loving these sheer pieces. This is Stradivarius. I have another gray charcoal color and it has less, it's not as sheer per se, but it has um, some distressed detailing, which is super awesome. I'm loving this boat neckline. Um, I find it super flattering on my shoulders, which I personally don't find a lot of things flattering on my shoulders. So that's really nice. But just having a piece like this, this is never really going to go out of style. Like I said, it's a knit. We're always coming back to knits. It's, it's that practicality. It's that season. It's getting cooler. We're wearing knits. Um, so always, this will be a piece that I'll have forever. I'm honestly not obsessed with the quality, but it is what it is. I definitely, if I could find a piece similar to this in better quality and my budget allowed for it, I definitely would be including that. So pieces like this, simple color, I'm going to be able to layer it. I'm going to be able to wear it with any bottoms that I, I already have in my wardrobe. So I'm loving this. And again, versatility, practicality, and it's cute. It goes without saying, leather is in and in in a big way this year. This is my final leather piece, I promise. I actually thrifted her last year. This is a Preston and York leather trench. It's so stunning. I am so obsessed with it. And aside from the fact that I'm obsessed with it, I do think that it lends itself to this year's trending styles quite a bit again it is a leather jacket i bought it because i know it's going to be a timeless piece but there are a couple of features of it that will sort of fall out of the trend cycle and those i'm going to speak to directly are the shoulder pads this baby is padded she is big she is full i love it i think it's a point of interest um i do have broader shoulders so i feel like i've stopped trying to fight that and tried to just go with it. And so accentuating that um, is definitely aided with the shoulder pads. But again, the shoulder pads are trending slightly this year. I feel like maybe last year in winter, they were trending a little bit more, um, but we're leaning into those clean lines and shoulder pads are always going to give you big, strong, clean lines. We also have the pleat detailing here down the shoulder again just to bring that extra tension to that point this is a wider fit it's not super tailored it's going to be practical for layering if i was dressing a going out outfit it would serve me quite well especially if i wanted to do something short um because it's going to keep me warm but it also looks super classy super elegant it is really long like i don't know if you guys can even tell but she's at my feet she's long um the quality is beautiful again when finding vintage pieces you're going to be able to get quality that would cost you a lot more these days and also materials that are quite hard to source getting genuine leather is becoming more and more difficult and for obvious reasons so being able to wear a piece and that is genuine leather um, is really really exciting and again you're not paying a premium price this year's trend cycle really favors that vintage look and how you are genuinely going to be able to achieve it through vintage shopping you're going to save yourself money and you probably i mean i find myself loving the character that these pieces have and sort of imagining where they came from and how they came to be here this piece honestly lent itself to a few trends it was the leather jacket look the utility wear um but the main reason I brought this piece out was to show you the clean lines, shoulder pads aesthetic and it kind of links into the next piece that I will show you guys. The next piece I am so excited to show you guys is this gorgeous poplin shirt with this shirt detailing, pleated shoulders and the trend that we'll be talking about is the balloon sleeve or the balloon pant leg. Both are really finding themselves into this season's trends. There have been a lot of balloon denim looks. Personally, I don't find that it's something that suits my body type. I do like it. I think it's really cool. I think it adds a really cool point of interest 
in two outfits. I do love it in this shirt sense. Again, I know I have broad shoulders and I've, I'm kind of past the point of like insecurity where I'm trying to hide that. And I am looking for pieces that help accentuate and dress that. And I really think this gorgeous shirt does that. Um, you can see the balloon sleeves are ballooning. They really came here to play. But I think the width here down the arm is complemented and contrasted also really well by the tight shirt elasticity of this bit. So we're, we're not losing any shape. If anything, we have more shape. We have that curve here and we have that streamline midpoint. Again, linking back to the shoulder pads, shoulder pads and balloon sleeves are something that have come and gone and come and gone and come and gone throughout fashion's history, all the way back to Tudor ages. The 30s, they were really big, into the 80s, into the 90s, they're back again. I think the way that we really geared these trends towards, this year's trends towards clean lines, that masculine vibe, that is really tying in well here. I know I keep repeating it, but that's what's on trend this year, so that's what we're focusing on. So I'm really loving this. This piece in particular is by Ghani, and I think Ghani is very quickly becoming maybe my new favorite, which is a little bit dangerous, but I'm loving their pieces. I love how this fits me. I feel so comfortable in it. Okay, guys, if you've watched some of these videos before, you would have been expecting this. You probably are surprised that I haven't already talked about it. We're talking pops of color, specifically this season, pops of red. This is a gorgeous Ghani mohair sweater that I have recently just obtained and it's making me feel like a completely different person. I love her. It's gorgeous. The material, the silver metal button detailing, it's gorgeous. Like, it's almost like a ball of crushed foil. It really is. It's gorgeous. This <sighs> design, stitch work, knit work. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with it and I'm acting different when I'm wearing it, so someone take it off me. Honestly, red has come back in a really big way this season. Honestly, I have never been a big red girly. Um, I My cheeks flush quite bright red often, um, and I feel like wearing red obviously draws attention to that. So I have never really been a big red wearer, but I love it for this season. Honestly, my advice would be if you're loving red at the moment but you never were a big red wearer, start out slow with purchasing or finding red pieces, be it a bag, be it shoes, be it a sweater, um, whatever pieces you are looking to add to your collection. Maybe start really slowly with incorporating that red. Um, just find one or two pieces that you really love and you know you will wear. Just because I feel like as quickly as it's come around, eventually it will deplete again. Um, and you don't want to be left with a lot of unwearable things or things you probably wouldn't lean towards um, in your wardrobe for the most part. I only have this red piece at the moment. It probably, I really am loving red shoes at the moment, but... I just don't think it's going to be worth the purchase for me. I feel like this is really classy. It's a silhouette I love. It's probably something I will always gravitate towards to. Again, it's a cardigan. It's practical for fall. Um, I'll always come back to it in terms of the silhouette. So I'm hoping that the, obviously it's such a bold color, but I'm hoping that the red in future when red is faded out of the trend cycle doesn't deter me. Um, but right now I'm totally obsessed with this piece. So that would be my main advice. Or even if you don't want to go that far, get a red lipstick, a pop of red. That's what's going on this season. So if you're enjoying celebrating that red, get into it. Honestly though, fall, we're wearing so many neutrals, a lot of dark colors or creams, ecru, white. So pop of color is not a new concept for fall, I wouldn't say. Um, I think a few years ago, I'm, I don't know if it was sort of everywhere, I just know that in Melbourne there was a really big um, trend with the Acne Studio scarves and the in winter, in fall, we're always looking to sort of make our outfit stand out in one capacity or another. So at the moment it's this really saturated red and I think even a really saturated um, electric blue. With red's not your colour, find a pop of colour, add a pop of colour. It adds a little bit of joy. I never say no to a pop of colour. The next trend that I really wanted to speak to might not be as clear cut as you would think. 
Um, obviously, this is a gorgeous off-the-shoulder feature piece that I am loving. However, it is not the fact that it is a off-the-shoulder piece that I am including it as much as off-the-shoulder really has been trending lately. It is the material of the sweater, which is, well, this is a mohair blend, but you can see that kind of fuzzy texture. So I wanted to talk about mohair sweaters. Mohair sweaters were very 60s, 70s, and I feel like, again, they're really back in a big way, especially in those sweaters that are a bright, bold pop of color. They add a little bit of texture, they add visual interest, they're practical, they're gonna keep us warm, and again, I feel like it's really strongly playing into that vintage vibe, that worn, um, cozy, try not trying too hard sort of look. Mohair is a type of wool harvested from Angora goats. Um, it is more commonly a blend um, with normally sort of a, like maybe a polyamide and a cotton or a polyamide and a different type of knit. But I am loving it. I love the visual interest. You add texture without even trying to your outfit. The only thing with this is, I think that the higher concentration of mohair in your sweater, so say it is above a 60% mohair, you're probably going to find it is a little bit itchy, which is why blending with those other um, wools is going to work a little bit more in your favor, but also it depends on your taste, depends on your preference, depends on your skin, and depends on your layering. Um, I do want to speak to you, the reason why I sort of didn't speak about this piece as an off-the-shoulder piece as much as it is, again, it's not, uh, as much as it's convenient um, for the transition between spring and autumn, I mean, sorry, summer and autumn, it's not I find it doesn't serve me well into winter. I hate having a cold chest. Um, I don't love wearing this piece when it actually is cold outside. Um, so for that reason, I'm not talking about off the shoulder, but off the shoulder really is also trending at the moment. Again, I speak to Australia because I am, I love a lot of the Australian fashion houses. I really follow um, a lot of Australian fashion bloggers, a lot of Australian, inf Australian influencers. Um, and they definitely, I think we'll see a lot of that now that they're going into spring and summer. There will definitely be quite a bit of off the shoulder. But um, I, again, I love this kind of neckline. So if off the shoulder is the kind of trend you're wanting for fall, go for that too, because it's definitely on the rise at the moment. I really just wanted to come on here and talk about the rise in popularity of mohair and how that really leads into that sort of vintage eclectic feel that the a lot of this false trends are carrying all right guys the final trend that i will be talking about is of course the notorious one and only stripes i feel like stripes aren't particular to any one season i do find they sort of lend themselves to more casual outfits but again i can always be proven wrong there are always stripes that are more done up that look great now we're doing I know absolutely crazy but we're doing horizontal stripes for full so um, again stripes are being done in so many different ways there are a lot of sweaters or knitwear that are having just the midsection of the black stripe and they're sort of a creamy color we have pieces like this where they're just like consistent thick stripe going through um, what can I say about stripes? They're classic, they add visual interest, they're never gonna go out of date. Um, they're very flattering for a lot of body types. They add a lot of shape and dimension to your body. Um, I love this olive green color. This is Stradivarius and I've, I don't have anything this color that I, and I love this color. I especially love this color with like beiges and browns. I'm super excited to pair that with this um, rib sweater this, this season. We're even seeing a lot of striped pants. That those sort of like chef pants. Um, I'm loving those. I'm seeing a lot of European girlies, like Portugal, um, Spain, 
I look a lot to them for fashion and inspiration and I love that a lot of them are wearing either striped pants or now the more trending boxes under the denim shorts and those tend to have stripes on them again a little peekaboo adds visual interest um, it's super cool again leans rip that specifically leans itself really into that masculine style they're like the boxes which have traditionally obviously been worn by men but you can't go wrong with stripes um, I feel like they're back every year. The pieces you buy with stripes tend to always sort of come back around, come back into the trend cycle, I guess. I also don't know that I necessarily touched on it so much, but the old money aesthetic, which I think a lot of us know was really heavily influenced by Sophia Ritchie. And it's quite big at the moment. It's that old money European style even, I, was, I would go as far as to say. Um, that is heavily influencing the fashion content that we're consuming at the moment. Definitely a play on that old money aesthetic. So again, that sort of leans into that trend. But it's a classic look. Stripes are never gonna date, like I said. They're always gonna come back around and that is why we love them and we're incorporating them into our wardrobe this fall. The last trend I really wanted to speak to you guys about is probably a less commonly emerging trend, a less strongly emerging trend. It's a little more subtle in terms of trends, but it is the skort. So this is a, the Zara asymmetric skort. We're giving skirts in the front, we're giving short in the back. Um, now, this is gonna be controversial. Not a lot of people love skorts. The reason I am really loving skorts is because mini skirts are really in this fall. And as much as I love them, I feel like I'm really sort of left out of that trend because I have large glutes. And I cannot get them into a mini skirt without it being my father's worst nightmare. It is not a good look. Um, for me personally, I do not like... I also feel uncomfortable wearing them because I know even if they do cover... How much have we got sneaking out? Like, it's not the best look for me personally. And I do love the trend. I love them mixed with um, sweaters and then maybe an oversized coat, oversized trench. I love that look and I hate not being able to be involved in it. So the score really sort of like is super versatile in that it can, it gives that sense of comfortability um, without making you feel like you're about to have a big uh oh moment. I love the asymmetric design on this. I love the waistband. Um, I'm pretty sure this is sold out from Zara in this color. I think it is still in, in the brown and the black, but um, this is gorgeous. I will definitely be dressing this with knee highs um, this season. I know I'm moving a lot, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get myself in the camera and also trying to allow you guys to see, but um, I was super excited with the fit of this. Um, sometimes, you know, with Zara, it's touch and go. And I ordered it online, so I didn't know how it was going to be. But I am a medium. I'm pretty much always a medium. Um, and this fit me perfectly, so I, I do love that. But you can see, even with this, like, sort of turtleneck, like, this is a fit. Like, this is, I could totally wear this out. I'd be happy to wear this with boots. I'd be happy to wear this with, like, a really chunky, chunky sandal. Again, we're talking clean lines. We have the asymmetric situation going on here. It leans itself really well into that. Um, perhaps a lot less into the masculine and even less so into the vintage look. I, again, I don't know if it will become so big as, say, the red pop of colour, but it's definitely a really wearable, workable piece for a lot of girls who cannot do the mini skirt trend, and I know I am not alone in that. So, um, adding a skort to your full wardrobe is super awesome. And again, in a basic color, maybe you're not gonna wear skorts all the time, 100% of the time, but getting it in a basic color makes it super wearable and something you can keep in your wardrobe for the future. Okay guys, that is me done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video i had a lot of fun making it I actually had more fun making it the second time i think i just felt more comfortable um in what i was saying in being intentional with how i was talking and delivering what i was thinking sometimes i feel like i get a little bit muddled between here and here so 
just taking the time to be able to speak and articulate myself properly um, I definitely feel like I was able to do that a lot better in this second reshoot of this video I had a lot of fun making it these are all pieces that I love the pieces that I've chosen and let me know what you guys think I want to know is anything a little bit more controversial do you agree or disagree with some of the pieces let me know clue me in I want to hear it the good the bad the ugly let me know if you like this video as well because again I'm I feel really <laughs> I know it's hard to sort of like assess that because I am a super confident person but I am really out of my comfort zone uploading this video, but I'm also so excited to do it. And I know sometimes pushing yourself past that threshold is um, what you need to do to make yourself better, to grow as a person. And I definitely need to grow in myself and my own confidence in vlogging and YouTube that this was something I really needed to do, even if you guys maybe don't love it. Um, but I had so much fun. There are so many fun trends this fall. I didn't tell you guys this. But, sorry, it's actually not that exciting, but I was just going to say a trend that I'm really, really, really about to give into is the gorgeous quilted patchwork coats. I think that, um, I'll add some pictures here, again, really big in Europe, particularly like the Portugal and Spanish influences that I've, Portuguese and Spanish influences that I follow, that I adore, that I love, that have really bold out there. Um, sense of style. I love that. It is not going to be for everyone. That is going to be a controversial one. I know it. Um, it's quite bold, but I love it. I love it in terms of adding visual, visual interest. I love it in terms of it just sort of like makes me smile whenever I see one of those jackets. I love the pop of color. I think it's brilliant and I love that you can dress them with trackies. I love that you can dress them with jeans. It, they're just gorgeous pieces. So I think I'll add some photos for your understanding but I think like uh, I'm really struggling with not having one yet even though I can't even really wear them yet because it's so sunny and warm outside but I definitely think that will be my next purchase so um, if any of you guys have seen those let me know I really am struggling to find a really good um, one that I, Zara came out with like a kimono dupe kind of for it and I thought that was super cute but I also didn't think it was super wearable and it wasn't super colorful and I do love the bright bold colors again that's something that you'll be able to wear going into spring and summer while it's still cool so it, and also in winter because you know it's a jacket it's quilted it's probably going to keep you warm so that is something I'm really really excited to eventually get my hands on when I can find one that I love but um Again, thanks for watching guys. I love making this video. I almost didn't have a video out for you guys this week because I wasn't gonna put this out, but I'm super glad I did. I'm super glad I filmed it. Hopefully the camera quality is better in this one. When I edit it, I'll have a sus. But thanks for watching guys as always, and I will see you next Thursday.